March 2023 was a month of a collapse of three US banks, which created a major scare for investors in the banking sector and immediately impacted share prices of every bank in the world. The three banks that started creating global banking crisis were Silvergate Bank, Signature Bank, both with a very high exposure to cryptocurrency, and Silicon Valley Bank, with its clients primarily set up technology companies. But then on 19th March, we all heard a story of Credit Suisse being in trouble, but was immediately purchased by the Swiss bank, UBS Group AG. So why is this happening? Do those bank failures have any impact on overall banking in the world? And more importantly for us in Australia, what impact does it have on Australian banking system and how safe are Australian banks really? Should we trust our banks? Can we keep money in Australian banks and still sleep without a worry? This is our today's discussion. My name is Catherine Isbrand from About Retirement. I'm a certified financial planner and you are watching About Retirement TV, the place that I've created to help all Australians to keep up with our financial system in Australia, especially if you are in the process of slowly preparing for retirement or if you have already retired and would like to improve your financial outcomes in the form of assets and income security for life. Before I start our today's chat, first, I would like to thank every single person that either via YouTube channel or email or SMS contacted me while I was sick. It is very hard to express in words a sense of appreciation and gratitude that I feel when all those beautiful messages arrived. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I will continue providing you with all the updates on many financial issues in a form that is easier to digest than you normally see in a financial press or on TV. So let's start talking about those banking failures now. You see, none of those banks was your typical general commercial bank that deals with everyday consumer they all had their own specific niche. And as good as a specialization could be, if all your clients that you have are subject to the same market risk, the bank's full business is also subject to that risk. Economic, business and profit risk have not been spread in any way, but rather concentrated on one client type. Hence, when the technology industry suffered after COVID, we witnessed collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. When cryptocurrency dropped in value dramatically, we had collapse of Silvergate Bank, Signature Bank. And when bonds have reduced in value greatly, there was a collapse of Credit Suisse. Obviously, the press and TV had the new hot topic to sell, scaring people across the globe, which created another panic of selling bank shares. Hence, the prices dropped and the circle continues. Governments across US and Europe announced significant liquidity measures in order to calm down the market. Funny enough, the whole story hardly had any impact on banks across Asia. But what about Australia? After all, we have a very close relationship with US and with some European countries. How this international banking turmoil impacts our banking system here in Australia? Well, I went looking for an answer and not just an opinion of economists as they can prove whatever point they wish. 
but rather a solid information that can prove if Australian banks are a safe place for our money or not. And what do you know, I have not been the only one asking that question. APRA, Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, the government body that supervises banking, insurance and superannuation institutions, introduced a stress test for our banks. The goal of the test was to understand if those banks would survive a major financial crisis. A fictional scenario of a deep and prolonged global economic downturn was created, including high inflation rate, very high energy pricing, unemployment of 11%, real estate so our family homes have been reduced by 43% over the period of three years. And to make things even worse, each bank was hit with a costly cyber attack. 10 Australian banks participated in the test. APRA said that as an outcome of such tests, each bank suffered credit losses and falling profits, as well as each bank reduced dividends to investors. However, each bank tested remained with the required minimum capital, with required liquidity of funds, and all our deposit continued to be safe. This test was done as a technical and calculation exercise only, and the outcome did not even take into consideration any steps that each bank could take in a real life stress scenario. If such stressful market conditions were really presented to banks, each institution would implement steps to mitigate any financial impact of above listed scenario. Mr. John Lonsdale of APRA said, the trust Australians feel in their bank's ability to withstand a crisis is the product of many years of regulatory reforms with the regulatory system for banking and has different and often tougher standards and requirements than many peer jurisdictions. I think this is a very important message to share around as much as we will always have some issues with our banks, with the way they operate these days, all online, hardly human support, the fact remains that Australian banks appear to be resilient. Australia is the only jurisdiction that requires banks to have sufficient capital to offset risk of higher interest rates. So in conclusion, we can say that although no financial institution will ever be immune to market volatility, Australian banks are well regulated, well capitalized, and have a very strong liquidity funding. But then you have to apply your own safety measure by being selective in what financial products you are investing into, which companies you deal with, the way you use credit cards, what type of domestic deposits and deposit accounts you use. Also in Australia, we still have so-called financial client scheme that provides protection of deposits up to $250,000 per account holder per financial institution and most general insurance policies for clients up to $5,000. And that brings an additional security layer of our bank deposits. I do hope you found this video of interest. It is a little bit outside of our usual retirement planning, but general understanding of markets and most certainly of our banking system that we use on daily basis is just as important. So give this video a like if you think it was worth listening to and please sign up to my channel not to miss my future videos and updates. Talking about assets and income safety, banking is one thing, but you really need to recession-proof your retirement. 
So watch this video now and apply the strategy or contact me to find out the best strategy for you. You can easily book a meeting through my website about retirement.com.au and while you are there, sign up to the newsletter to keep up with all the changes that can affect your financial outcomes. As recommended, view this video Recession Proof Your Retirement. The second recommended video for today is how to prolong income in retirement without taking any extra investment risks. It's all about smart and timely planning, as well as risk reduction to get the outcome you desire. I will speak with you in my next video. Bye for now.